but you got it for there, that's nice. But how about the community at large? We don't have homes. Well, I am creating, we are creating more housing to allow for rents to stabilize, to take our students off the housing market. No, I, I understand that question. I understand that part. It's nice for you to do that for them, but then you have to all schools very expensive. But I'm thinking about the people who are in, in the area who are not going to school there, who have, who are living virtually on the streets. What are, you going to do, what are you planning to give back to the community in, in regards to the people that are on the streets, the present tense, who are not going to go to your school? Legal assistance, students that work in clinics. Ask me a question. Cause, um, well, that's where they, the they don't build. Public, they don't build residential housing. Well, I mean, so you wouldn't know. Here's Tom Tom giving back to the community. Yes, I understand you don't necessarily build that. But that's what's all about business. But I'm referring to another part, whereas we you there for the students, but there's a lot of the people who are down here. What are we going to give to the community where people who don't have it that good? I feel uh, like that. We provide, well, legal, not down well, we provide legal assistance, defense, immigration services, wage and hour representation. That's what we do. We're, we're a public interest law school. We don't build a market rate housing. We don't build uh, housing for um, we build housing for our, our students. That's what that's our, that's our mission. Okay. So we're doing our mission, and we take our mission seriously. The level of, of engagement, support, activity that, that Hastings provides to the Tenderloin is you know, unsurpassed in the legal. <coughs> I, I know law schools. I don't know business schools. I don't know veterinary schools. We provide we provide services to the community, okay. and um, we're proud of it. It's a good thing. All right, so we can get that on get, get that online. Do things. Sure, sure. I, like I went I went to Haiti one time. I was in a friend and picked me out of the building there, and I went to Haiti to get some advice. A Saturday so, legal clinic. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I lost contact with that idea. I like to be be Yeah, once a once a month every Saturday we have uh, on-site legal services. Volunteers provide pro bono assistance to people dealing with eviction, uh, tax issues, contract problems. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. A um, couple things. One thing for people to realize the Tenderloin Housing Clinic lawyers were all graduates of Hastings Law School. And actually, Hastings. I uh, started the Tenderloin Housing Clinic way back in the 70s in the back side of the North of Market Planning Coalition office at 295 Eddy Street, which is where I was introduced to Randy Shaw and the Housing Clinic. So I'm very happy for that. And what I look at it as, the more housing Hastings can build for their students on campus, the more housing that opens up in the Tenderloin that the students are renting for people in the Tenderloin to afford, which can move them up from hotels to apartments, which then allows the people on the street to move into the hotels. So the more housing they build it indirectly affects more people getting off the street in SRO housing. So there is a piece of it that helps the community. The thing I need to ask is, when is your draft DIR coming out? Uh, final, we're editing it right now, middle of February. Probably goes public end of this month, end of February. Do you have a copy?
Some of you know me. My name is Mark Rennie. I've got Jeff Ang with me, who is a client and owns uh, Pandora Karaoke, which is what 177 Eddy Street. Yeah, yeah. It's been there for quite a while. I was actually pleasantly surprised when I first went down there years ago, and I was expecting like who the hell's gonna go to 177 Eddy Street? And it was a really nice crowd, really friendly people, no hassles. They've never had any hassles that I know of, uh, other than probably the customers doing the cost on the street. But unfortunately, uh, the landlord greed that I'm running into in San Francisco now is mind-boggling to me. Having been doing this for 40 years, it's just like every landlord in the world thinks that it's their God-given right to uh, you know, make millions and millions and millions of dollars. So their lease is coming up. They're not going to renew their lease. I don't know what the hell they're putting in the basement of 177 Eddy Street. But uh, Mr. Eng and his partner are being very proactive. There was a space over at 50 Mason Street, which used to house the 50 Mason Social Club, that unfortunately got evicted for not paying for something. I'm not exactly sure. But they're they're hoping that they can move their whole business around the corner. It's about you know, I don't know what is it, 200 feet away. Yeah, it's a little bit. Move the whole business around. As in the other uh, Pandora karaoke, it's going to be subterranean. I don't think there's any noise problems. Um, there haven't been any problems that I know of. I took, I had to actually take these guys to the ABC Appeals Board because we're right now at the end of speaking of police. The, the police's way of dealing with community appears to me to be down here as containment. And by containment, I mean we don't want more alcohol. We don't. We don't want to differentiate between good businesses and bad business, so the answer is no. So these guys were trying to get their hours expanded from like something dumb like 11 o'clock at night to 1 in the morning, and then it was no, 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 no. And we, we decided to take it to the mat, and we won at the appeals board. Because the appeals board looked at it and said, wait a second, they've been in here, there's no problems, there's no whatever, and they gave it to them. So, I think it's a good business. Uh, Jeff's going to tell you a little bit about it. I've got some pictures. They, these are your current ones, right? Yeah. Uh, I only have two copies. So yeah, I'm so I'll just sort of like point it out. But this is what Pandora looks like as we sit today. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're across the street. So we're about half a block away. We're on 177 Eddie. I can't do anything to those. It's not my building. I only own the business. That's the city. landlord doesn't want to put payment on the building and thinks he's going to make a million dollars. I wish he would paint the outside, but he won't. And he won't let me do it. No, it's a beautiful spot, and they were yeah, they were pretty so smart, and they uh, yeah, right. overall, you know, they did things and he's like complete overall, yeah. talked uh, yeah. Jameson yeah. liquor into paying for a night in San Francisco. Would you hold it up so I can put it up? Sure. You know, uh, so I could, yeah, just hold it a little a little yeah. bit away. Okay, a little closer. Okay, that's nice. There's the blue moon room. Yeah. Okay. Here is the main room. Yeah, it's all pretty much subterranean. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then here's the Jameson room. And these uh, liquor folks put a little money into the neighborhood so we can upgrade okay, right. the... Uh, there. That's good. Upgrade okay. the liquor. Thank you. I want to put more money in the neighborhood and start cleaning it up the neighborhood. I mean, I go for that too. Yeah. Well, I think, I think cleaning up the neighborhood without totally gentrifying it. Let me tell you what I miss in San Francisco. A little bit of grit, a little bit of artist, a little bit of uh, interesting, you know, something other than gaggles of uh, code riders walking down the streets in groups of ten talking code to each other, all looking very much like they came out of the Midwest in uh, some suburban high school, you know. And unfortunately, it's it's tough, but I I love the tender one just because it's got beautiful buildings. It's got still got a little bit of class to it, uh, character to it, let's call it not so much class, it's character. And, you know, we, I think these guys have been good for the neighborhood, I think they'll continue to be good for the neighborhood. We've got a battle, they, these guys have to uh, put out a mailing to everybody within 500 feet, so some of you live in the neighborhood, you'll be getting those, and everybody looks at that, oh my God, more liquor, we don't want it, it's going to be a giant nightclub. You know, it's, 
going to be subterranean, it's going to be exactly what the other thing is, and I don't think it's been a problem, I don't think it will be a problem, and uh, you know, uh, if you got any questions, Jeff would be glad to answer. And, uh, um, what do you want us to do? We'd love a letter. Because we, we have to go to the Board of Suits on this one. Because here's, here's the problem. Pandora has a 47 license on the first floor, there's a catering kitchen that's used by, uh, well, there's a small restaurant, but the catering kitchen is used by uh, sure. Korean barbecue folks. Like a Chinese uh, truck. Yeah. Mountain. Uh, mountain. Like a food truck. Yeah. Like the mountain. chairman. They, they, they prepare the chairman truck. Yeah, they prepare yeah. all the So there is a food operation going on. This place is significantly smaller. To put in a kitchen would be very difficult. And so what we're tr hoping to do is uh, convert the license from a 47 to a 48 um, and uh, get some decent hours so we can, you know, because obviously, try as you may, people on a Friday, Saturday night love to go out at 10 o'clock and love to get done at 1.30. And if you, if you limit the hours to 12.30, you basically put, them out, you put your line out of business. Okay, did the social club have a, ha have a liquor license? They did, yes. Okay, now you are you just going to take your the one you have and move it over to fifty? That's essentially what we're doing. Here. Okay. Sure. Actually, we may not have to go to the board of suits. Remind me of this because I looked at it. I think the fifty Mason. If there's this there's this rule that if a new license, a forty two is a bar license, a forty eight is a bar license. Uh, so it's sort of like kind zoning wise, they consider it exactly the same thing. There's no zoning issues. It may be you don't even have to go to the board. Yeah, uh, they, they might have beer and wine or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's within Dom's so we're we'll transferred to this one. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's what we're uh, hoping to do. Same license, been there a while. Well, we've been here for six years, so we're part of the safety group here on 100 Block Betty. Mm -hmm. Meets every bar. My security guards are in front, which helps move the oh, yeah. off along. Uh, mm -hmm. So it actually helps all the neighbors. Too. I like doing the drug addicts. How do I like to do with it? Yeah, I like it. Uh, so at 2 o'clock every day, we used to wash down the streets. I don't know if, you, if you've seen us, but everybody on that 100 block ready used to wash down the streets. Well, I just, we meet. what we want to do, I just, we're trying to get these, uh, these, these private gender uh, footballs to wash on our yeah. sidewalk, but they won't yeah. do it because they don't understand the word, you know, clean up the place, you know. And they don't understand that, you know. His name is Ricardo. He's a loser. Uh -huh. He's got to be a loser for a man. <laughs> I don't have control over that, but we're only open from 6 p.m. on. We need to have the place clean on the outside so we can have some attention to uh, clean up this uh, area also as part of the reason. But you don't understand it, though, because you don't live around here. And that's the thing you don't care about. And that's what makes the residents bad because you don't listen to the residents at all. He doesn't care about himself and making a paycheck. And he'll be for him and him, you know, and, and, you know to help with us. You know? You know, we pay rent here, and we get to feel miserable for what for them. Yeah, well, like, I, I, I don't have much to say about landlords that, you know, don't feel themselves part of the community or look at a good tenant who's always paid their rent on time and ha has a really nice thing going on. Mm -hmm. They don't care. It's just like, oh, I can make more money. You're not paying. So what do you think your timeline might be? Uh, it's posted. 50 Mason Street is posted. Um, if we have to go to the ABC, if we have to go to the Board of Soups, it'll go to a City Services Committee sometime in the next 90 days. Dave Falzon, who runs alcohol for the SFPD, he sort of makes those decisions. And he had an emergency gallbladder operation about a month ago, and they, he's, you know, he's up there, with, you know, good friends with Chief Sir, and so Chief Sir has been under a lot of attacks. So uh, Dave has sort of been on dealing with that, dealing with Super Bowl, dealing with his gallbladder. Chasing him on this one. You know, we have an appointment set up today. Now it's small. It's, you know, sometimes it's tough to sit down and figure it out. But he he does the scheduling for alcohol over at the board of soup, so It's uh, hopefully in two or three months. I think what we're trying to do is uh, we're doing the mailings. Is the mailing out. Yeah. Mailings out. Okay. So mailing. thirty days. Thirty days. Thirty days after that mailing is out. It's the end of the protest period. We, we just want to see if we've got one or two people that we can talk to, or if we got 50 people don't want another liquor license in the tenant line. So that becomes an issue, but I think we're going to wait to 30 days before we start doing construction. 
the construction is going to take what three four months. What? Liquor? Well, it's, the only way you're going to have a business is a liquor license, unfortunately, because people like to drink. Anyway. Um, since there's only two board members here, we can't take action tonight. Okay. But I can recommend to our board that we support the project professor. Okay. Um, and I think I'll also recommend to try to get you up to 48, because I understand where the, that the fits into the business plan to share the development. Um, so just keep me in the loop. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? No. No, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next one on the agenda is St. James and Summer. No. no. to be able to move in across the street from you all um, to 234 Eddy Street. Uh, sorry, not even across the street. Two doors down. Two doors down, yeah. Thank you. So I wanted to just come and tell you a little bit about our organization. Do you need some? I have. You have some, that's right. Um, and be available to answer any questions that you might have. So, and I apologize in advance. It's been a long day. I'm all tired. But, um, St. James Infirmary is an occupational health and safety clinic for current and former sex workers and their families. So what that means is that we um, are a peer-based organization where we are providing health care and social services as a community to one another. And um, the community that we represent is people who have at some point in their life been involved in the sex industry. We use the term sex work as an umbrella term. It um, encompasses everything from um, legal activity to um, criminalized um, professions like prostitution, um, people who are involved in pornography, people who are exotic dancers, people who have exchanged sex for their survival needs, for, um, for food or housing at any point in their life. Um, so our organization came to be in San Francisco in 1999 because there was this need um, for the sex worker community to have healthcare. No one in the industry has any kind of healthcare. Um, and there was a lot of stigma and discrimination that sex workers were facing um, by healthcare providers. Um, a lot of judgment, a lot of shaming, um, and just general um, poor services. So um, a group of sex workers, um, this, this city has a really rich um, history with the sex worker rights movement. Um, came together and came up with this idea that we should be providing services to one another. Um, at that time, the Department of Public Health was supportive of the idea and helped us start this clinic, um, basically as a pop-up operation at City Clinic over on 7th Street, 7th and Bryan. So St. James um, started existing in City Clinic one night a week and eventually outgrew that space and moved over to 10th and Mission, where we've been for, like I said, about 14 years. The services that we provide there range from primary medical care, we have um, doctors available on a drop-in basis or an appointment basis, to um, mental health care, we have therapy and support groups and peer counseling, um, to harm reduction services like syringe access, um, you know, condom distribution, basically getting people um, the, you know, the kind of basic supplies that they might need to stay safe. And we also offer um, a hot meal, a food pantry, a clothing closet, things like that. Um, we also try and have sort of like community development and community building activities right now. We have a fashion design and garment construction class that meets once a week. 
Um, and we also have a clinic that's specifically for the transgender, gender non-conforming, and intersex community where people can